From the hill country to the Rio Grande, live from SeaWorld, this is News 4, San Antonio at 5. It is finally here, the opening of SeaWorld of Texas, simply the biggest marine theme park in the world. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alan Hemberg. And I'm Lori Tucker. Boy, we've got a great view right here in front of one of the big attractions at the Water Ski Park. We'll be talking about that a little bit later as we bring you all the fun and excitement live here at SeaWorld. But first, let's go back to the studio for the top news story of the day with Art Ruscon. Art. Take a look at the crowds that came out today. Thousands of people flocking to see Shamu and friends as SeaWorld of Texas opened its doors today. And what an opening it has been. We are live here at the park to bring you some of the excitement, and there's been a lot of excitement here today at SeaWorld. Oh, that's right, Alan. We'll have an up-close and personal look at Shamu and friends, and we'll uh, tell you about some other fascinating shows, too. We'll take a peek at a lot of different things here at SeaWorld. We will also tell you something very important, how to beat the traffic so you can come out here without a, a headache on your mind. First, though, we want to take you to the official local opening of SeaWorld of Texas, which took place at 9 a.m. sharp. Linda Wasserman was there. A beautiful morning sunrise greeted visitors arriving at the front gates. Some came as early as 7.30. Just can't wait to get in. I only got 20 minutes left. <laughs> Shamu and his friends kept the crowds entertained, and the enthusiasm was contagious. What did the kids want to see most? A Shamu. Seals. Shamu. When the gates finally opened, the crowd scattered in all directions. A favorite spot was the dolphin pool. I didn't know you could get this close to the to the dolphins at that. You could actually touch them if you want. But when you get that close, watch out. Oh, boy. <laughs> in another area, you won't get wet, but you will have an underwater window on the sea. The views in the coral reef and shark exhibit are breathtaking. There are just a couple of areas not yet open here at SeaWorld. Part of this children's playground in Captain Kid's World needs some final touches. And the roller skating and bicycle show called Wheels is still in rehearsal. A visit to SeaWorld is definitely an all-day experience. But when you're ready to go, don't forget to say goodbye. Linda Wasserman, News 4, San Antonio. But if for some reason you never make it out to say hello, and we can't imagine anybody doing that, you still will probably feel part of the economic impact SeaWorld will have on our city. Now, for starters, SeaWorld is going to bring an estimated 3 million tourists trooping through our city, bringing their dollars with them. Some analysts predict up to a billion dollars in new money for San Antonio's economy. And the uh, new freeway being built out to the SeaWorld area means continued jobs and the possibility for new stores and other businesses to crop up along the pathway to SeaWorld. The Westover Hills area is already clustered with uh, new home construction, more development is possible. It may take years for that to happen, but uh, all the analysts predict that there will be a very strong ripple effect on San Antonio's economy. But to most folks, of course, SeaWorld means simply just plain fun. Yeah, you know, a lot of people have to wonder, you know, what does SeaWorld have besides Shamu and the whales and the penguins and the fish and so forth and so on? Where all Susan Tejeda went out and found an attraction today that actually has people in it. <laughs> It's the Beach Blanket Ski Party. The job description for a position in this show, sun and fun. But there is one more element to the job, hard work. There are about 45 people working on this show, and some of them are from San Antonio. To qualify, you have to be a good skier. But there are other aspects to this job, like knowing how to bop to the tunes of the 50s and 60s. These folks are constantly training, but even with all the practice, there were still bugs to be worked out a few days ago. During a dress rehearsal, the producer gave everyone a little warning. Let me explain that uh, there are some things that people will be seeing Friday that you will not be seeing today. And there will also be some things that you'll be seeing today that hopefully people won't be seeing Friday. Rivera believes that practice makes perfect. And let's face it, if you have to put in a little overtime, what better place to do it than on the beach? Susan Tejeda, News 4, San Antonio. Well, it looks like a lot of fun, and it certainly is. There's a lot of things to do out here, here at SeaWorld. A lot of people have to ask, well, how do you get out here? Well, we put our consumer reporter, Dan Garcia, on that story. And Dan says, first of all, forget your maps. This place is so new, 
it's not on most of the maps. But here's how Dan got out here. Even though the way to SeaWorld isn't on most maps, it's not really that hard to get there. Just pay attention and you won't have any problems. If you're southbound on the 410 loop exit at the signs, it's a Texas 151 West. This map shows how you'll take a right on 151. Once you get off of 410 and get headed on the main road over towards SeaWorld, you're going to be on what amounts to a two-lane access road. That's the proposed Northwest Freeway back behind us. And what that boils down to is that it could be slow going if there's very much traffic. The ride over from 410 to the main gate took almost six minutes. But that was yesterday and virtually no traffic at all. By the way, once you do get to 151 West, all you have to do is follow the SeaWorld signs and they'll take you right to the front gate. Via Metropolitan Transit has also taken steps to get people to the new facility. What we've got basically, we've created a new line. It's the number 63 and it's called the SeaWorld Express. It serves the downtown area. It makes stops along Alamo Plaza, along Houston, the main streets downtown. And it takes you express nonstop out to SeaWorld. Bingham says there's one other provision. The route called the 5051 Loop Express will run between North Star Mall with stops at Crossroads, Bandera, and Ingram Park Mall park and rides. For News 4 San Antonio, Dan Garcia, call four. Now the entire News 4 crew is out here enjoying uh, the SeaWorld, the opening day of SeaWorld. Not just Lori and I, but John Willing is out here. I think John is, uh, where is John? Well, Somewhere. he's over at a very popular place, probably the most popular place here at SeaWorld. We're going to check in with him next and see if this wonderful weather will continue. Stay with us. Weight Watchers. Well, fortunately, SeaWorld's big opening today and the first official day of Fiesta are sharing some good luck as far as the weather is concerned. It's really a gorgeous day. You couldn't have a better one for two big events. John Willing is over at Shamu Stadium where he's made uh, not only one big new friend, but I'm sure a lot of others. Right, John? Everybody loves this weather. Oh, yeah. Boy, what a day, Lori. A lot of people are just saying, hey, how could it have happened any better than this? You know, when I came here about a half hour ago, Shamu was down there in the water and, and posing for pictures, and then promptly she splashes up some water right into the lens. Boy, is that gratitude or something? Anyway, it's beautiful out here. They've got the stadium filling up very quickly. And outside right now, the temperatures are warm. What a beauty of a day. Temperatures currently in the middle 80s. We had a low this morning of 63 humid degrees, and right now it's still 83. Humidity 41%. That's way up from what it was yesterday. Winds right now from the southeast, and the barometer has been falling. Allergens, they did show up heavy on the molds. 635 per cubic meter. We also had some light oak at 50. Let's look at the maps. Today's low is down to 64. 63 was the final low in San Antonio, 57 up in Abilene. But up there in Dalhart, they had the state's lowest temperature with 37 degrees, 62 in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Well, looking at things currently, you can see that the temperatures have warmed up beautifully. 86 degrees down in Brownsville, 80s around South Texas, and even 80s all the way up in the Midland area. But look up there in North Texas, 67 degrees in Amarillo. Obviously, that front still has an effect on us. It's pushing through North Central Texas, but basically it is stalled in place right now. In the next couple of days, it'll gradually slide eastward. The satellite picture shows heavy clouds over California. That is our storm system coming our direction. That's a huge low pressure. As that comes toward us, yes, you can expect to see a large weather change. In fact, here's what it looks like on the fronts. The front is still sitting up there across Texas, going across the Intermountain area. And then that low that's over California, which is bringing anywhere from 12 to 15 inches of snow, potentially, to the mountains of California, even the mountains of Southern California, that is what's coming toward Texas. So it will eventually cool down our weather. Radar is showing a few scattered showers there, especially along the length of that front. Here's the forecast for San Antonio. Tonight is going to be cooling down somewhat, but it's still going to be a little warmer than it was last night. So expect the lows to drop down into the low 60s. I'm expecting to get down to 67. In the morning hours, it'll be cloudy with 67 to 70 degrees. By the afternoon, still mostly cloudy as the storm comes in. There's a slight chance for showers tomorrow afternoon, but a better chance tomorrow night going into Sunday. So Sunday, anytime during the day, we are open to thunderstorms. The high on Sunday, only 78 degrees. After that, the extended outlook shows we clear out, Lori. So it's not so bad after all. Okay. John, thank you. And listen, uh, be nice to Shamu, will you? We'll see a little bit later. Hey, George is out here also, somewhere. Yeah, I think he's uh, the smart guy in the group. He's over there having a cool one by the edge of the water. We'll get to George and all the sports when we come back to SeaWorld in just a moment.
certainly don't have to tell native San Antonians that SeaWorld isn't the only thing happening today. Uh, this is the official kickoff day for Fiesta, San Antonio's traditional annual 10-day party. And the festivities got underway this morning in front of the Alamo. Hundreds of people gathered in the plaza where the world's largest cascarone was the center of the opening day ceremonies, but shared in part by the special first-time Fiesta visitors from Disney World. Fiesta Royalty broke open the colorful cascarón to get the 10-day celebration underway. And the festive crowds lost no time in getting into the party mood. Crowds began showing up at Market Square and Farmer's Market to begin the celebration. <laughs> And as part of the opening day ceremonies out here at SeaWorld, George McKenzie and his sports machine is here as well, down by the water's edge. George, let's go to you. I like the sound of that, Alan. Thank you. And the cold one you mentioned a little while ago, yeah, I did get a cold <laughs> one. When the boat came by, one of the skiers sprayed a little nice, cool water up here on the deck where we are. You're lucky. Oh, it felt great. In any case, the story of the day continues to be the possible sale of the Spurs, and there is a new player in that drama. He's a developer and car dealer from Houston. His name is David S. Wolf. He's 47 years old. He's the out-of-town phantom investor that we've been talking about for the last couple of days, and he heads a group of business people who have a strong interest in buying the Spurs. We called his office a couple of times today. He was out and so far hasn't returned any of the calls, although we have received assurances from a number of people that this group does not intend to move the Spurs out of town. Angelo Drosos and Red McCombs also both out of the office on various matters today. So it appears right now everything's pretty much on hold and there won't be much else to report until the Spurs board meets, and that should happen sometime early next week. Spurs, by the way, will play Sacramento tonight at the arena. Spurs' magic number is three right now, meaning any combination of three Spurs wins or Phoenix losses will put the Spurs into the playoffs. Phoenix plays the Lakers tonight. Chances are the magic number will drop to two no matter what the Spurs do. Okay, baseball this afternoon. Rangers at Boston. It might be years before you see the kind of catch like this again that you're going to see in just a moment. Ellis Burks bobbles his pop fly, winds up falling, but catching the ball between his knees. That is an absolutely great catch. Steve Bouchelle, the hero of this game for Texas. This is his second homer of the game, and it broke up a 2-2 tie in the 10th inning. Final score from Fenway, 3-2, favor of the Rangers in 10. One other game in the American League today. New York beat Milwaukee 7-1. Everything else comes up in the American League tonight. Also, just one game in the National League this afternoon. The Cubs playing the Pirates at Wrigley. Andre Dawson goes downtown with one on in the third. Then in the fifth inning, it'll be Sean Dunstan coming to the plate. He will hit a solo shot. It's his third of the season. Final score from Wrigley, 6 nothing, favor of the Cubs. I'll tell you very quickly also, soccer this afternoon in Austin. Plano leading Madison 2 nothing in the second half. We'll have more for you, of course, at 10. And back to you guys. I'm going to get sprayed again. Look out. Okay. Looks like fun, George. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll be coming back to SeaWorld in just a moment. As Sharon Jones meets Shamu up close and personal. We'll be back. Now, without a doubt, the marine life here at uh, San Antonio's newest attraction is the feature attraction. But if someone had to pick out one star at SeaWorld, there's little doubt that that would be Shamu, the killer whale. Right now, our Sharon Jones tells us that it's more than just her majestic size that makes Shamu special. It's hard to think of them as killer whales. Shamu and her pals, Namu and Kandu, are graceful, playful, and personable. But Mark McHugh, head trainer at SeaWorld, says killer whales are the top predator in the ocean. They basically do not have anything that they fear, as far as I know. They uh, are very inquisitive, uh, very responsive to us, and uh, that's what I find so special about them. In this environment, it's easy to see why Mark and the other trainers find the whales so special. Shamu and her buddies are very smart. They are also sensitive to touching, and it's an important part of their training. Well, they each have little different idiosyncrasies, I guess you could call it. They behave differently. The way that they perform their maneuvers is slightly different for each animal. And that's our job as trainers to identify these things in these animals and uh, work with them as individuals. Killer whales will pick up on training concepts quicker than any other marine mammals. Trainers use a combination of signals and rewards to show off their natural acrobatic abilities. Since the day Shamu was transferred from her San Diego home, she's attracted a lot of attention. 
Transported in her own portable jacuzzi, Shamu receives star treatment from liftoff to splash down, from her new trainers to curious others. You think approaching a two-ton whale, even with six inches of glass between you, would be an intimidating experience. But their playful antics make them seem more like lovable pets. <laughs> they don't seem to be very shy, or they're not really concerned about people being real close to them. Well, they see people along the glass all day long. Many times they'll spend a lot of hours just sitting over here watching the people. So here's looking at you, Shamu, Kandu, and Namu, San Antonio's newest entertainment starlets. Sharon Jones, News 4 San Antonio. And Sharon Jones, biggest fan, no doubt. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> had a great time. Fin. <laughs> Something like that. We uh, have to say <laughs> goodbye now from SeaWorld. Let's now go back to Art in the studio. Art.